I love Trump. You love Trump? Absolutely, yeah. Since 2016. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so did you vote in 2016? Well, 2016 I was in high school, so no. But 2020 I did, and then now again, obviously I am, of course. Obviously it's been more than a year of this war in Gaza. It is not closer to ending, uh, even though there's been calls for ceasefire for over a year. How do you feel about the situation? So I don't think it started on October 7th. I think that it started in 1948 when British, the British and the United States decided to create Israel and make it a state. And that's when the first Nakba happened, 47 to 49. 15,000 Palestinians were killed. Even more were displaced. They were forced out of their homes. And as you see the maps from back then to now, Palestine has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where now it's Gaza and West Bank and even West Bank is getting infiltrated. There's no safe place for Palestinians to exist. A lot of people think, oh, it happened on, 19, um, on October 7th. That's not true. That's just what the media decided to show and side on because ever since 1947, the media has been anti-Palestine. How do you feel about the way that the Biden administration has handled the situation over there? I think it's pathetic. I think he's pathetic. I think Kamala is as well. I think that the whole world knows that they won't do anything. So when they say things like to Iran, one word, don't. It's like, what is that, what is that gonna do? I'm obviously not a terrorist sympathizer. I'm not pro-Iran. I think Iran does a very good job at suppressing anyone who opposes them. I'm not pro-terrorist -terror organizations. But also you have to look at the IDF and the Israeli forces. They're terrorists also. If you ask Palestinians what they've been through from 1947 to now, they will tell you who was born in camps, whose grandparents got killed over this, who now lives in Jordan because they got pushed out. These Palestinians have been told either sell your land to us or we kill you for it. And there's no, how is that, how is that fair? So why do you think Trump would handle the situation better? Because everyone's scared of him, honestly. That's the only reason. Trump is very pro-Israel and everything else I agree with him on except for that. So I honestly have to go with what I agree most on and that would be with Trump. But I think that Israel would be scared of Trump the same way that Hamas, Palestine, Iran, China, Russia, all these countries are scared of him. So they're not gonna keep pushing and pushing and fighting because they know he's gonna come in and end it all right there. And I mean, I think that not necessarily a two-party state is the best route for Palestinians, but I think that if that's the best that we can get for right now, at the very least, they deserve their land back as much, as they, as much land as they can, as much as they're allowed to get back. And how do you feel about the way that the United States has armed uh, the Israeli government to carry on its war? I think it's insane. I, I honestly, I really think it's crazy. It's sickening and it's really sad and it's unfortunate that we're funneling trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars into this country that there are help in the Middle East. No, they're not. No, they're not. If we stopped helping them blow everybody else up, maybe then we'd have good relationships with other countries in the Middle East. How does it feel to be a uh, Palestinian American going into this election? Do you feel like you're being heard and seen as a community? I do not think Palestinian Americans are being heard or seen as a community at all. And I do think that there have been a lot of Palestinian Americans who have been trying to kind of work within the system. And we saw that at the DNC and look what happened, you know? So for me, I'm not looking forward to this election. I am not gonna be voting for Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. And I've stated that publicly and I'll say it again because Kamala just the other day basically said, yeah, you know, if I were to see the videos and images coming out of like what's happening, yeah, that's pretty bad. But you know, you know what you people also want is like lower groceries, like lower priced items and stuff. So that to me just shows that she knows very well what is going on. She's a part of the administration that is doing this. She knows that the people that would be voting like do not agree with this, yet she is still saying too bad. Either way, you're gonna have it be like, Trump, right, the fascist, or it's gonna be her and it's still gonna be a genocide, but maybe you'll get some cheaper eggs. And it's, again, it's been over a year and things are just getting worse. And, you know, Joe Biden the other day said, oh, basically to Israel, you have like one month left. So what are they gonna do in that month? Look what they're doing in North Gaza right now. Look what they're doing to all of Gaza and not even just that within the West Bank as well. I want people to not stop talking about Palestine. I think a lot of people at this point, it's been well over a year, so people have kind of started to let it go a little bit. And specifically, I'm seeing this from non-Palestinians, so I think it's really important as Palestinians with, you know, privilege and whatnot to be able to tell others to not stop speaking about Palestine and that Palestine will always exist. And at the same time, we need our allies to step up and honestly do more because we cannot just rely on Palestinians to educate, to boycott, to be leading protests, to be doing like everything as we're also trying to grieve the fact that our people are going through a genocide, that more of our land has been stolen 
than ever before. This is the most amount of Palestinians that have been killed. And as this is happening, we're being punished specifically as Palestinians, you know, in diaspora in the US, we are being punished at school, at work, at protests, we're being arrested, we're being blacklisted, we're being put on all these lists. So it's really important for others to step up and stand in solidarity and do the same as we do.